Hi guys, and welcome back to Reed's Readers with your host, Quentin Reed. Now, let me just give you a little life update before we get into this one's a full tag video. The reason why y'all haven't seen many videos lately, life's been a little stressful at work, and every day I come home, I sit down on my bed and I'm like, Oh, I'm going to read. I'm going to get into this. It's going to be good. And next thing I know, it's 7 o'clock in the morning. And I've passed the fuck out. So, I thought... Where did I put my brace? Did I just throw it on the ground? Probably. Whatever. So, I've been kind of in the mood to do a video. And I'm not as tired like, we're a little slow today at work, so I thought I'd do a tag video, and I found this tag video called the Rapid Fire Book Tag. Now, I have my laptop over here with all the questions, just sitting there. This tag video was originally created by, what's her name, Girl Reading, which I've never heard of her, but I really loved her, and I loved her answers, so I thought, why not check out her tag? Why not zoo this tag? Because I found it very fascinating. And it's really fun, so this video might be really short or really quick. Because you're supposed to answer these as quickly as possible. Now let's get into this tag. Now, ebook or physical book? As you can see behind me, physical book. Yes, I know it's not the normal setup. It's back to what it kind of was. But I feel a little lazy, okay? Deal with it. But as you can see, the lovely physical books. I like my physical books. Now, I don't mind ebooks. I just have a habit of forgetting about them. So, I am in the middle of an ebook on my phone that the author, which wants to stay anonymous, Wrote a book called The Legend of Eve, a Warrior of Eve novel. Never heard of it. Asked me to read it and give an honest review on Goodreads. So, thought, why not? So, I am in the middle of an ebook. So, I don't mind ebooks. So, paperback or hardback? Now, I tend to be that type of person who gets the cheapest I can get. Because if I spend more, if I get, I'd rather spend less and get more than spend more and get less, if that's what you mean. Like, I have behind me James Patterson, I've got a paperback, and then the next one's a hardback, followed by a couple of hardbacks, and then a paperback in the middle. So, I don't mind paperbacks or hardbacks. Now... If you become one of my favorite series, I tend to replace you with hardbacks. Like, all my favorites everywhere. All my Harry Potters got replaced with hardbacks, which are going to get a reread eventually so I can read some of these newer books that have never been touched. Ho, 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 ho. But yeah, so I don't mind. Like, even right here, I've got paperbacks into the hardbacks. So. And as you can see right here, my Zavino series, shorts and sold and shorts, I don't really care. Those are going to get replaced with hardbacks, so. So, I'm a toss-up when it comes to that one. Online or in-store shopping? I have a habit of doing both on the same paycheck. I, yeah, I have a book outlet order, which y'all are going to see which isn't going to quite be an unboxing because I already unboxed it so I could look at the books. But y'all see that. I have several books coming to me from Book Depository, Thrift Books. But I do shop a lot at Half Price Books, Barnes & Nobles. So I kind of like both equally. Um, I do really love online purchases because I've been getting into like British covers to some books. And I'm all about 
I hate to state this, but I am a cover by that I may love the story itself, but if your cover doesn't, like, pull me in, I don't know if I can read it, if you know what I mean. So, I do like to online shop and in-store shop. I do do my online shopping, a lot of it, but I will shop in-store because we got to support our local bookstores. Like, in Oklahoma, we have the Circle Bookstore up by Penn Square Mall. Norman, we have a place called The Stall, I think. It's either The Stand or The Stall, I can never remember, over by the library. And it is just the cutest little store. Yes, the prices are a little outrageous, but hey, independent bookstores, love them, gotta support them. And I am, I mean, I do shop at Half Price Books and Bounds and Nobles all the time. Bonds and Nobles half press books listen trilogies or series I think that depends on the book series I've got some series that I really like that are trilogies Hunger Games for instance um but majority if I'm enjoying the book I would prefer a longer series aka Harry Potter, a.k.a. Women's Murder Club, which I do believe is on book 17. Uh, my Alex Cross series by James Patterson, do believe is on book 24, 25. So, I'm going to go with series. Heroes or villains? Ooh. You know, I'm going to say heroes. I'm a sucker for the hero trope. But I will say I prefer my heroes to be females. A lot of male heroes I don't really relate that well with. But, yeah. A book you want everyone to read. Ooh, sorry, hit my desk. What do you want everyone to read? I know this is going to sound anticlimactic, but... It's easier to get the British cover. Ooh. I keep hitting my desk. Sorry, guys. Uh, it's easier to get the British cover, but... How to Hang a Witch. By Adriana Mather. Ooh, that white glare. Ooh. Mm -hmm. All I gotta say, guys. Salem Witch Trials meets Mean Girls. Check it out. You won't regret it. I know I tend to talk about that book a lot. Sorry. Um, recommend an underrated book. Besides How to Hang a Witch, because that is so freaking underrated. You know, I'm going to suggest a book called Interred with Their Bones by Jennifer Lee Carroll. If you like books like Da Vinci Code or any of those other Robert Langdon kind of books, Da Vinci Code, Angels and Demons, um, Inferno, Origins, you'll love this. And if you're a huge fan of William Shakespeare, to me this is very much a Da Vinci Code with a female lead who is searching for Shakespeare's missing play, which I do believe is based off of Don Quixote can't remember. It's been a while since I've read this. But yeah. And you have to use like you gotta use like to, to solve the case she has to go from one quote to another quote to a different quote and she finds them out and to find where the missing play was buried and lost. So 
very underrated, a 5 out of 5 stars. I do have the sequel, which is Haunt Me Still by Haunt Me Still, which is apparently about a lost play of Macbeth where the spells were actually true. Haven't got to it yet, because I recently got a copy of it. Isn't aren't they just gorgeous and so old timey with like the deckled edge pages? We're not gonna fuck off of the deckled edge pages. But I thought I might get to this in October because I need a new spooky week. Okay, the last book you finished. Do graphic novels count? Which is over here. I will give you... I rented a bunch of graphic novels from the library because I've been kind of in a little bitty of a reading slump because I've just been so tired and every time I pick up a book... The last physical thing that I have finished, which was, I think, yesterday, actually. I finished The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina by Roberto Agar Sacasa and Robert Hack. This is what the Netflix series spinoff of Riverdale is going to be based off of. And this artwork is so freaking creepy it's not even funny where's a picture of lady um let me see if i can get a picture of her face madam satan really creepy but really really good i think i'm giving i think i gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars but I will say the last physical copy I read was The Last of August, which is the second book in the Charlotte Holmes series. And five out of five stars. I have the third one sitting over there somewhere. Don't remember where I sat it down. But it's over there somewhere, and I'm going to get to it. The last book you bought. I'm not going to say the online purchase ones because I'm going to keep this as a little bit surprised because I got some things coming in and we're going to have some fun. But the last books that I bought at Walmart the other day, because I wasn't feeling my best and I was like, ooh, these sound good, was the Disney villains, the evilest of them all. We all know I like me some Disney villains. Okay, hold on. Go back to that Heroes and Villains. I may say Villains if we go to stuff like this. But I do prefer my Heroes. But this book was just so adorable because it gives you all the facts about each of the, the villains. Like their prized possession, their education, prior work experience, hair colors, eye colors, likes, dislikes. Of all of... The Disney villains, and they also have some of these like pop out little things. Let's see if I can find another one. Like you see, like where they just pop up, and they have like little things. I thought this was gonna be so cute, and I can't wait to read it. But I also picked up this because me and my friend Jay Jay saw it, and he thought it just sounded amazing. And he wanted to read it, and he asked, he was like, hey, do you find that interesting? I was like, yeah. He's like, how about you get a copy, too, and we'll read it together. He started it. I'm going to give him, I tend to read faster than he does, but it is called As You Wish by Chelsea Sadati. Um, basically, the day you turn 18, you get to make a wish. And your wishes come true. Which 
just sounded really interesting. And he also read out loud the dedication, which I'm going to read to you real fast, because it just broke all of our heartstrings. For my mom, who gave me enough opportunities that I never needed wishes. Does that not just sound cute? Oh my god. Okay. Weirdest thing you have used as a bookmark. Uh, in high school when I couldn't find my bookmark, uh, I used my assignment and the paper that the teachers gave us. So I won't say that's like the weirdest thing I've ever used. Used books, yes or no? Obviously, yes. A lot of my books on here are used. I do prefer to get used books over new books because I feel like a lot of books these days that if you don't get them, let me just move these stuff out of the way, is I feel like a lot of books get beat up and they feel like they don't have a home anymore. They deserve love too. So I want to find and save what I can. That makes sense. Top three favorite genres. Mystery, fantasy, LGBT contemporary. Borrow or buy? I will say, I prefer to buy to the extent that I have a shopping problem. So kill me. Um, characters or plot? I think that just depends on the story. Because if the story requires like a heavy plot then the plot better be bam tastic to pull me in but if the story requires more character development more time with characters and i get more involved in the characters i feel like i that's the route that it needs to go so i'm kind of a toss-up on both um Long or short books? I'm going to say both. Because I'm not intimidated by books. Because I've got like some Stephen Kings over there I'm going to get to soon. That are a thousand pages. And I have like these bind ups. These leather bound bind ups. That are like this freaking thick. That are, oh, well over a thousand pages that I'm going to get soon. So, I'm not intimidated. I like, as long as the story does what it deserves to do. If the book is so drawn out that, like, I feel like two-thirds of the book should be cut, no. Or if I feel like the book was too short, not. Nah. There are books that are really short, like The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman that packs a punch and has you crying. But then again, there's been other books that I've read that are just as long that left me like, really, that's where you're going to end? You call that a book? What? What? So yeah. Um, long or short chapters? Depends on the author. There's some authors that I prefer when they have their long chapters. Or there's like James Patterson, who's each chapter's like two pages and they end up with 142 chapters. I will state, reading 142 chapters compared to reading like 13 chapters makes me feel a lot more accomplished at the end of the day. And I feel like I deserve a treat by buying more books. Don't you think? Um, name the first three books you can think of. How to Hang a Witch, Wicked Deep, and Summer of Salt. How to Hang a Witch by Adriana Mather, The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw, and Summer of Salt by Katrina Lena. Leno. Leno? Leno? Whatever. If you haven't read any of those, check them out. If you love anything about magical realism and stuff like that, check it out. Magical realism is like a genre that I'm slowly getting into. 
that's like a branch off of fantasy and I'm starting to like really love them. Books that make you laugh or cry. I actually do both a lot. Um, for an example, a book that made me cry. More Happy Than Not by Adam Silvera. I was bawling for three hours afterwards. Um, Outsiders by S.E. Hinton. Bawled my eyes out. Film the video. Y'all seen it. If you haven't, check it out. Um, Before the Devil Breaks You by Libba Bray. Bawled my eyes out. Oh my god. I will say I tend to cry a little bit more than laugh. Oh, a book that had me rolling to the point where I fell off the bed laughing. The Upside of the Unrequited by Becky Albertalli. That grandmother. Oh my god, the scene at dinner where she says the comments, the racist kind of comments. I fell off my bed laughing so fucking hard. That I just lit. Um, let's go to the next one before I like continue. Um, our world or fictional worlds? I like both, but I will state I prefer a fictional world where I can disappear and lose who I am. So I'm gonna go with fictional worlds, but I will state I like a good book like *The Daughter Smoke and Bone* by Lanny Taylor, British cover. If you can't tell, I like my covers. Um, which used our world, and then she stepped through a door into a fantasy world. So if a book can do that and pull me in, oh, again, magical realism at its finest. Um, audiobooks, yes or no? Always yes, and they count as reading. I'm sorry, Sean, at work. Sorry, boss. It counts as reading. Deal with it. Because there's sometimes that if I'm having issues getting into a book because either A, the writing style is new to me and it's different and a little bit tough to get into, two, I'm starting to fall asleep, but I know the story itself I'm going to love. Three, I'm busy and I really want to read because I've been listening to the audiobook to Nevermore, Charles and Morgan Crow. Oh my god, that book is getting really, really intense and really good. Um, but yeah, do you ever judge a book by its cover? Let's go back to my British cover obsession. The American cover to this has a girl on it with a mask. There's only like a, um, a one chapter, maybe three page discussion about a masquerade. So why is there a girl on the cover with a mask? This is about an open doorway. I like the fact that all three of the, the British covers have something to do with doors. Because that's the point the book. And look at the cover. Does it not, like, pull you in? And I'm sorry, a girl on it with just a simple little mask just does not appeal to me. So, yes, I do judge a book by its cover, but I also judge a book by its author and its content. Book to movie or book to TV adaptations? I'm gonna go with both. Because if, if it's a really good book-to-movie adaptation, it deserves... Sorry, glasses are glaring. You can't see. It deserves to be talked about. Like Love, Simon, which is the book-to-movie adaptation of Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda um, by Becky Albertalli. Or, if we're going to talk about book-to-TV adaptation... We're going to talk about some Riverdale, which is based off the Archie comics. That is perfection. So, I'm going to go with both. Because I feel like it all depends on 
the story itself. Then there's been some movie adaptations that is like the worst ever. Um... Aragon. The book was freaking phenomenal. The movie, though, that director deserves to burn in hell for what he did to that book. Just saying. On to the next one. Oh, I can't, really can't see. Um, a movie or TV show you preferred to its book? Um, I don't really have a lot. I preferred the book to the Outsiders over the movie. Oh, I'm gonna state the uh, Stand By Me. Let me grab those. The most recent book, because I haven't done my Booktubeathon wrap up yet, but the book to movie adaptation that I did was The Body by Stephen King. And the movie was Stand By Me. I'm going to take a moment and basically say Stand By Me was freaking phenomenal. Five out of five stars. Book bored me to pieces. It was cute. It was fluffy. It was everything I wanted in a book. But because the fact that I recently read... Outsiders by Etsy Hitton. Not this copy, a different copy, but the other one's buried. Um, I kept comparing the two and it just kept irritating me. Like, I kept seeing scenes and this was like, Outsiders did that better. Why can't you be more like Outsiders? Like, what? But then I put the movie in and I'm like, so much better than the Outsiders movie. Better acting, better everything. Made me ball. You know, I may actually rewatch this here in a minute. Hmm. But yeah. So, that's one that I'll state. I preferred the movie to its book. Um, series or standalone? I think that depends on the books themselves. If a book deserves a sequel, then I would say the series. But there have been some really powerful punchline standalones that have no sequels. That are some of the best books ever written. And then there's series Wizard of Oz that are amazing. Sorry, closest series. That deserve what they get, you know? So, I'm gonna say it really depends on the story. If the story deserves multiple books, then it deserves it. But if a book, if a story is written so at the end of the book is an end, then standalone is perfect for what it deserves. So, and that looks like we are at the end of the questions. So, that's me with the rapid book fire tag. Um, I want to say it again. I am sorry for the absence. I'm sorry that life has gotten like a little crazy. But, I've got some interesting things coming up. So, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. And if you loved this tag... Hit that like. And remember kids, reading is what finds a mental. Until next time, bye.